Okay, so what's another cool way we can go about using the plates node? It's one of my favorite nodes to use, like I said in one of my other videos, but there is far more we can do with it other than make cool mountains. So we're going to learn how to use the plates node to make more of, more of a mountain side landscape, maybe something in, that you might see in Skyrim. So we're going to start by using the plates and we're going to keep it as it was when we came in when I first put it in and then we're going to use displace but in the, the displace we're going to change the method to vertical um, and then we're going to increase the scale I essentially want these to be super spiky I have to increase the strength Okay, I can kind of see what it's doing. We're going to copy the displace here. And we're going to change this one from vertical to rugged. Let that do its thing. All right, there we go. Uh, we're going to just slightly decrease the strength. Don't need it that much. There we go. All right, now we're going to throw in Apex. And let me tell you the reason why we're using Apex with this, with these plates. So the plates itself already gives us these slanted edges, which, by the way, we want to select slants. Totally forgot that. That way we get more slanting landscape looks. So the plates already gives us this uh, slanting colliding landscape. And Apex does the same thing, um, except it affects the entire landscape itself rather than per noise. So it's going to give us this slanting this look if there's a way to explain it and what we're left with are these really hard rocky looking areas now the way to f get more information and detail in this is by freezing this node going back to the plates and then changing the seed and the scale here as well as the steepness and then we'll get a bunch of different looks here and it's all driven off of this one node that way you don't have to worry about changing the apex node too much. You can change the steepness in the apex node. But we're already left with this look right here that's already kind of decent. So what we want is to just add more information or rather more detail at the get-go with changing the plates node. So I'm going to go ahead and change that around a bit until I find something I like. Okay, so this is a look that I like. All I did was change the seat around a few times, and this is what I was left with. So this will give us a cool-looking um, edge to the landscape. So let's go ahead and add some filters to this to make it look even better. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the sub-terrace filter. And we can all see how this adds a whole bunch of tiny little terraces. Makes it look really good. This is better than using like the stratifier, in my opinion, which is an erosion node. Um, but the subterrace allows us to keep our overall look of our landscape, but adds these tiny little terraces across. Makes it look really nice. Now we can control that a little bit by throwing in a select height node. So let's go ahead and add that to the apex and mask it into the subterrace. And what we want to do is I want to select the higher areas for this effect. This specific one, anyways. There we go. And now we have that subterrace filter being applied to only the top parts. And now we can change the amount. Essentially just doubled it. And then the dispersion, just a little bit more, just to add a little bit of variety. And uh, we're going to add 
our erosion. So the first thing we want to do is probably throw in a breaker. And again, just like always, I'm just going to use the hard cracks and then the accurate option. And in this case, we're going to throw in thermal. Oops. And if you drop it on top of a node, it should auto connect. In this case, it did not. And you can see how the thermal erosion is creating these taluses all over the place. And don't mistake this for snow. You can get a similar effect, but it's not snow erosion. It's shaping these ridges so that they are steeper um, and like they're being eroded down uh, rather than adding snow everywhere. And what we want to do is I'm going to change the debris size as well as the talus settling and the talus angle just to add some variety. And if we go back and look at what we get, you can see the debris size is adding this tiny noise in there. It's also changing the angle. And what this does is it breaks up the overall uh, fractal that is making the noise. It makes it look really cool. And then uh, we're just going to throw in micro erosion after that. There we go. And what micro erosion is going to do is it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to add a whole bunch of micro erosion to the landscape. It's just very small and subtle. If you look around, right around here, see what it's doing. It's just very small. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the iterations and the strength. And you don't have to increase this a whole lot till you start seeing some effect. So we're just going to keep it kind of low and just bounce between these two and see what we're getting. Alright, I'm liking what we're getting. So I think that looks good. So I think what the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to finalize it with some snow. And we're just going to encompass the entire landscape here. Because this higher altitude here might be a scene that you would use um, at a higher altitude like a mountain scene rather than down in the valley. So we have our thermal. It's creating these ridges. So if we look at the breaker here, you can see how we have some of these ridges here that are not smoothed out. Thermal smooths smooth those out. Micro erosion adds some detail to the top parts here, and then snow fills in the rest. And now we're going to be left with these rocky outcrops that come out through the snow. Before we do that, let's increase the resolution to 1K. See, it doesn't take very long to build it out at 1K starts getting to the erosion it takes a little bit longer but even those build out pretty quick um, now we can start texturing this so let's throw in a protrusion map and we're gonna throw in one more and I usually just like using the velocity map so let's go ahead and use the velocity map You can see what we're left with there. So that's our protrusion, and that's our velocity. So let's go ahead and mix these in together with a combine, with it set to max 100. And then we're going to mask out the protrusion a bit, or mask in the protrusion, because we don't need all of that from the velocity, but we can actually probably even change that to mask in the uh, the velocity mask there. So that's what we have. And then now we're left with not so much going on. Now we can set up a sat map. Make sure you right click the snow and set it for color. And now these are the rocks that we have going on right now. We're going to go ahead and take this uh, snow, which for some reason we are, that's why it didn't look right. 
it was going into the snow part. We don't want that. We want it to go straight into the landscape. There we go. Now this is what we're left with. Now that looks much better. All right. Then you take this snow, bring it down here, set it up to a quick color. Throw that out into a mixer. Just to keep things basic, I'm going to change the outputs of those. And uh, change that to max as well, 100%. And now we have our snow coming through. So now we have these rocky crops, outcrops coming in from the protrude or from the plates. And uh, we can do one more thing here to make it look better. We're going to do a select slope. We're going to select the slope of the snow there. And we're going to do higher values here. So we're going to take it up to about 80, maybe, depending on what we need. And increase the minimum as well. To be 78. Throw that into a quick color as well. Set this up into a mixer. With it set to max. 100. Now, you have your snow. And now you have your snow dusting some of the slopey areas of your landscape. It might not be the best solution, but it is a solution, and it looks pretty decent. Um, and then that's what we have. And you can change the snow color out for pretty much anything. You can put in a green color for, like, you know, uh, vegetation or um, grass or something. Um, and you can change this node out for, like, a similar color. So we have this color right here so we're just going to choose that one and we'll choose that one here as well just so they're matching and then that's what we're left with and, it, and I mean it really comes down to what you want but in this case we're just going to stick with white for snow because that's easy there we go and there we go alright so and those will be your rocky cliffs, rocks coming maybe on a mountain side or something. So this will be like coming up to a peak to another mountain, and this one's coming up to a peak to another mountain. And this will be waking your way down through the valley. Um, and I like the way this looks, especially when you start rendering it out with good textures. But in any case, um, if you have any questions or concerns, please go ahead and put them in the comment section, and I will see you in the next one.